Welcome to your top rated global podcast that is your one stop shop for everything entrepreneurship, self development, and smart investment decisions. This podcast is hosted by owner, doctor, and creator Dustin Steffi. We are blessed to have accolades that include a 2022 nomination by the People's Podcast Awards in the category of business, money donated to two amazing causes, cystic fibrosis and the Boys and Girls Club. Lastly, global recognition of being a top 50 podcast in four countries. Without further ado, let's chop it up. Today is a special, fun, and entertaining day. Not only do I have a guest on that I've never had before, but it'll be fun because it'll be on something that we haven't even discussed in the couple years that we have been a podcast. It is my great pre- Ooh. It is Check that. It is my great pleasure to introduce Howie Zales. Howie is the founder of HJZ Productions, and he also founded another company pre-pandemic called Veridity Entertainment. He's within the production industry. He focuses on broadcasting, sports, and entertainment production. So I am proud and honored to have Howie on. Howie, how are you? Dustin, how are you? Great to see you. It's good to see you. Uh, I'm glad to have someone that's uh, better at production and broadcast than me on. So let's do this. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Excited so to be here. Obviously, the million dollar question is, is who is Howie? What, is, what does Howie do? Uh, how did how did he come to be this person he is today? So let's let's dive into that and let's have some fun with that first before we continue any further. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm from New York. Uh, I grew up going to Rangers, Knicks and Mets and Yankees games. And I always, you know, took notice of the camera operators and, um, you know, it looked like a fun job. And and I love sports. I wanted to play professional baseball, but I knew I needed a backup. And I took an elective in high school because I needed this one last class. And the description was a trip to NBC Studios and a tour of 30 Rock and to watch a TV show being taped. Uh, and I'm like, well, how bad can that be, right? And uh, I fell in love with TV production during that year. And uh, I, I knew what I wanted to do. I was going to combine my love of sports and my new passion of TV into a career. So I only targeted colleges uh, that had those sorts of programs. And I went to a school. I was fortunate enough to go to a, a SUNY State University in New York College that had a TV production department that you were allowed to touch the equipment day one. So we were shooting, you know, hockey, basketball games, producing TV shows, and learning from the older, you know, the juniors and seniors. And uh, it was an awesome experience. And I knew exactly what I was going to do it was going to be sports broadcasting. So with your passion of sports, how far did you make it in the sports echelon before you couldn't play anymore and you just did production only? Uh, like I played uh, in college on a, on a club team. I, I, I didn't make it like, uh, to play for college, but just as a club team, but you know, that's what I did on the weekends. I, I went to, Buc uh, you know, I went to a hitting clinic every Friday. I went to Bucky Dent's baseball school. Like it was my, th this is what I was going to do. And the first time I made it to Yankee stadium to be the camera operator, you know, I took grass and dirt and I was like, man, I wish I was here to play, but it was better, better to be there at, at all than never. So, yeah, you're in a percentage of people, in my opinion, that like envy you in a sense, because while you're not playing and I get it because I have that little itch to want to play all the time because once an athlete, always an athlete, right? you, you still are around it, which is. The end game for most athletes, in my opinion, because some people get hurt, right? And they try to figure out how do I stay around it? And you kind of figured out how to be right. around it as a career, which is awesome. 
And, yeah, you know, my wife and I, I go to parties and things like that and doctors, lawyers, and no one cares. They just want to know what the inside of a clubhouse looks like and who, you know, what stories do I have from interactions with players and things like that. And let's not discredit club sports. At least you still played in college. You may not have played for the college, but you still right. played. So there you right. go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good, good, good segue into a couple things. So you're within the production and entertainment industry, which that's a whole industry in itself. I I feel a lot of people don't understand what goes into production, what goes into entertainment, how how people get the news and how people get all this information. I mean, even this podcast, for example, I mean, you and I talking is just one facet before right. I edit the episode, I release it. I, I do post-production. You, you know what I mean? There's just so much that goes into it. And I'd love to kind of just talk about the production side of it and, what really goes into it because i feel some people think right now all right cool so you hold a camera you record things and uh there it is and there's just so much more to it well yeah let's take uh let's take a, a baseball game for example right uh the crew just doesn't show up you know a half hour before game time um if it's the first game of the series uh usually people start getting there at you know, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, uh, because, um, everything needs to be set up. There's could be 10 to 12, depending on the, uh, size of the show cameras. Uh, if it's a Fox or ESPN game of the week, there's a set up day the day before. Um, so the crew gets there nice and early, starts setting up the cameras. Each department sets up their aspect of the show. And then once everything is, you know, deemed set up, we have what we call a fax, where we go through each individual area and make sure every single thing works. Um, and there's nothing left to chance. Every button, every zoom on a camera, every focus, every tape machine or replay machine, we make sure uh, everything works. And then we um, check the transmission path from the TV truck to uh, wherever it's being transmitted to to make sure that that path is working. And then there'll be like a, a lunch break and then uh, usually a crew meeting um where assignments are given out and each sport has a formula to how it's covered uh how it's shot so if you're doing low first in baseball and there's a right-handed batter up you have a different assignment if there's a runner on first or second versus if there's a left-handed batter up what your assignment will be um so all that has gone over and uh that's just you know example of what a day a day in the life of a uh, uh, you know television production person could be and it all starts weeks and weeks ahead when the client calls and says are you available on this day so you have you have pre-planning to do even before getting there for yeah. uh setting up and all that stuff because you have to pre-plan and then like you mentioned you set up usually depending on the sport a day before go over mm -hmm. all the facts, make sure everything's working as far as equipment. And then it doesn't just stop with the record button, which is the same with me, right? This doesn't stop after you and I are done recording. Right. You also have to go through and look at the footage you got and make sure you're providing your best foot forward yeah. in a sense, right? Yeah, well, it, it doesn't stop because if they're, um, if they're if everything needs to get uh, depending on what department you're in of the TV show, if you're a camera operator after the show, you might need to break your camera down because uh, the cameras come, they're pretty big cameras. They come in different pieces. They need to be broken down, put in their correct boxes, brought back to the TV truck. Everything needs to, everything that was brought out needs to be brought back. So, uh, you know, the day definitely has different parts to it from the setup to the production, to the teardown. 
Um, and, you know, it, it also starts before you even get there by researching what team, you know, who's on what team. So, you know, who the stars of the teams that you're covering of the sport you're covering. So, you know, the storylines. That's awesome. I, uh, <laughs> listen, I have the most respect for what you do because I'm similar to you, right? Because for a podcast, you have somewhat of the same thing except i don't have a crew my crew is myself i wish i had right, a crew. Right. that'd be awesome uh but i mean i have to make sure the camera works i have to make sure that i understand who i'm interviewing get a feel for where we're gonna head and then i'm the producer of my own podcast right so the direction that we head is based off of where I'm kind of leading it, right? Which right, right. Same, same is true for you with the with the uh exception that like for baseball, we'll just use baseball as an example. You're not you're not hitting the ball, so you don't know what's gonna happen there. You're not telling the players what to do, they just kind of you know perform. Right. But it's it's awesome nonetheless. I I think it's important for people to understand what goes in to yeah, what we do. Yeah, it's um, especially poor sports production. You know, each sport has its own own formula. Uh, football, if you're doing one of the cameras up top and the ball is going left to right, depending where the ball is on the field, is what your assignment is, and it completely flips when it's going right to left. Uh, and you have to know instinctually what your assignment is and who who you're covering whether you have a you know slot receiver or you have the you know the line of scrimmage or you you know shooting isoing the quarterback or or the running back it all depends on what's going on yeah football is my world so on a on a given day if i if I remember the field right, I counted maybe about seven, eight, nine cameras because you have one camera overlooking the field. So you have the field point of view. You have cameras on opposite ends. So that way you can yep. see both end zones. You have the cameras that are following where the ball is from the line of scrimmage moving. I mean, it is so much that goes into it. And furthermore, those cameras are expensive. I mean, mine. Yeah. Mine's expensive, right? But mine isn't what you have. You are truly, truly, truly like professionally in it more than like mine right now. So uh, yeah, what what position did you play? Uh I played defensive tackle and then I played offense on nose guard as well. Um, so I learned both sides of the balls. I've had my share of football injuries. I've, got, I've ended up with two concussions, one on the sideline from Notre Dame and one on the, uh, on the NFL sideline. Hey, at least, at least for you, you've been able to not only be a part of like high school, college, but you've been in the professionals as well yeah. too, which is really nice. Uh, really good stuff. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to move a little bit uh, into something different. Cause I'm sure my, my listeners are wondering so you have someone that's within production uh on how does that tie to entrepreneurship and you've already kind of brushed it a little bit so yeah. so with the fact of you doing something that you're passionate about you ended up going after a career within it right but mm -hmm. what you didn't know was that career that you went after you were actually kind of diving into the entrepreneurship world and i won't let the secret out i'll let you let it out but i yeah, know um you were diving into the entrepreneurship world let's talk about your entrepreneurial journey because sure. yes a job's one thing but entrepreneurship's another so in the it, just uh the tv business for you know uh freelance everyone's a freelancer or an independent contractor so in the sense you're an entrepreneur because you're going after your own business and if you don't sell yourself you're not going to get another job so it's very it's everyone's an independent contractor there's no staff jobs but uh i, I knew you know i i knew the possibility of getting hurt was out there i knew i couldn't lug her because i did a handheld camera i knew i couldn't lug around a 25 pound camera you know for 
20 years or for the rest of my life, I always knew I needed a backup. Um, so a friend called who I'd known forever and he worked at MSNBC at the time. And I don't know if you remember, I miss in the morning, the radio show, but, uh, once in a while they would take, I miss his radio show on the road. So they were go doing it in Connecticut at the Mohegan sun casino. And my friend Brian called and said, Hey, are you available to do camera for us on this? I miss show. And I said, yeah, sure. And he said, you know, do you have any friends? I need two more camera people. I need some audio people. And he listed all the entire crew he needed. And I said, yeah, I can find those people. No problem. And he said, can you do me a favor? Can you send me one invoice and pay everyone for us? And I said, sure. And I, then I got to thinking, well, that's gotta be, there's gotta be a business behind this somewhere. I I'm getting called by clients that are doing the same thing. Why can't I do this? And, um, long story short i i got i got a, a few more shows from my friend brian and then i got some sports shows and it snowballed and in 2007 the local union came into uh effect and i got a contract with the union and then it just kind of took off from there uh and in 2023 we have uh contracts all over the country uh our primary focus is the new york new jersey connecticut area but we do, we hire for sports and entertainment crews nationwide. So question for you, cause you're a creative mind like me, where does the creativity for you within your realm, where does it start and where does it stop? I understand that like you're barred to kind of whatever sport you're, you're uh, producing, but there's a sense of creativity in it and you bring your own spin into it. I would imagine. Right. Yeah. The creativity is like, how are we going to get new clients? Right. Cause it's very, it's kind of cut and dry. The clients will call and say, this is what we need. Can you go ahead and find it for us? So I, I need to one, find the best people that I know that'll suit that job and I'll give the client exactly what they need. Um, there's lots of different personalities out there. So I need to know who the people I'm sending on those jobs, how, how they'll be. Um, um, and I need to be creative in the sense that I, I need to scale my business. How can I creatively do that without, uh, doing it the best way possible. Let's take it back a little bit, about a half a decade plus. So we're talking pre-COVID-19. How was production and business uh, pre-COVID-19? And then we'll go post, right? Because yeah. things have changed a lot. And so it's really important to map this journey and see where evolution is. Yeah, you know, everything was great pre pandemic. Um, our business was generating a, a good amount of income, the highest it ever had ever done. TV production was, you know, um, everything was being produced out of TV trucks and every, there was a ton of people working and everything was going good. And then, you know, the, the pandemic happened and as you can imagine, like many other industries, the TV, especially the sports industry, came to a crashing halt because there was no sports. Um, and what came out of, of that is the cloud-based production where, and this was maybe five years down the road, right? Maybe five to 10 years down the road but it got sped up. And what I mean by that is we can now produce a, a, a sporting event where just the camera operators and maybe an audio person or, or two are on site and the rest of the people are remote. Uh, without getting into the weeds of the technology, that's basically you know what transpired out of uh the pandemic so there's could be less people working because they're required less people are now required but on the other hand 
more events are being produced because now there's more streaming uh, avenues. So actually more people are now working, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, it's crazy. Uh, if you don't line up TV crews well in advance, it's hard to find people that are available. So right there, you just mapped the journey of evolution. So everything was great for a lot of people in a lot of industries pre-pandemic. Post-pandemic, it, it created a shift for all of us. And that shift was, how do we operate our businesses? All of us, not just you, not just me, but everyone in the world. How do we operate in a manner where we're setting our businesses up for the changes that happened, which everybody evolved over that time post pandemic yeah. a lot of things have happened right so for for all of us right we have podcasts we have broadcasts and we have all this stuff how have podcasts changed how you guys do business what is the difference in your mind between a podcast and producing like you are because there's a lot of sports podcasts there's a lot of like yeah. quick hit like podcasts in the sports realm that give you the cliff notes instead of watching the event you know what i mean yeah so right before the pandemic uh my wife and i my business partner we decided to open up a second company veridity entertainment services and it was going to work in conjunction with hjz our other business uh in dealing with non-union crews that get traveled into our area for our clients and then fast forward the pandemic happened and no income right like so many other people and i knew that the need for clients to get their message out there still existed how are we going to do that how can i pivot how can i transition like you know the rest of the world and we got into live streaming and not just doing like a podcast, but like actual full on uh, broadcast quality shows for our clients. So let me give you an example of that. Um, T-Mobile, one of our clients, uh, wanted to interview nine baseball players in nine weeks um, during the pandemic, during 2020, during the baseball season but the interviewer had to be completely remote from her house. And it was like getting into their, like the story of their season, their life story. We brought in childhood pictures of the people and this is how we did it. We came up with these remote capture kits. There were their high end uh, computers with uh, laptops, with uh, professional cameras, ring lights, USB microphones, and we sent these cases of equipment to the interviewer's house where that stayed for like three months. And every week that we produced one of these shows, we'd send it to either a cl stadium clubhouse or the player's hotel or their house, depending where they are. And um, we do these hour long shows that aired uh for t-mobile and you know it got their message out there it was a sponsorship that still you know got out there for them and we did similar things with uh capital one for march madness and the final four uh for the super bowl uh we worked with tiger woods um charles barkley magic johnson you know, just to name a few for all these different clients uh, doing these similar type productions, delivering high end broadcast quality productions with uh, a lot of these athletes. 25 years of experience, my friend, and you you have so many things to be proud of and so many people that you've gotten to be a part of their life. It's awesome. I mean, you just mentioned three athletes that I wish I could even see, right? Tiger Woods, Magic Johnson, Charles Barkley. I mean, look at you. You've okay. been you've been in it, right? And it's awesome. With that being said, 25 years, what's the best part of your career so far? What has been the hardest part? And then what's the future look like? The the um, the best part 
is I've gotten to see the world. Um, I've gotten to see some of the most exciting sporting events that people would give their right arm to be a part of. I was with, I was a camera operator that took Michael Phelps when no one knew him, when he won his first gold medal in Greece out of the pool for the first time. Uh, I was with the U S women's gymnastics team when they won gold medals in Beijing and in London. Um, I, I was with figure skaters when they won their gold medals. Uh, and I, I've gone 20 something Kentucky derbies, uh, with horses that won the triple crown. Um, so I've been on some of the best sports productions that exist. Uh, so to me, that's been like the highlight of my professional career, but ultimately my family is the most important thing. Um, and where do I see myself going? Just scaling my two businesses, uh, to the point where we can employ more people and, and, and that's it. It's awesome. Like you said, you've been on stages that people would give their right arm. I'd give my right, left and all my legs <laughs> to go to it, to be honest with you, any of them, but you've, you've gotten to really make an impact, which is awesome. So when I look at entrepreneurship and why I do it, it's because I want to make a difference. It's because I want to make an impact. It's because I want to teach other people so the industry doesn't die. So for me, podcasting, right, it's still relatively new-ish, right? right? Yeah. It's 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 not been around as long as, like, actual broadcasting. So for, for, for a podcast, I, I'd love to just show people how it works because it is – part of the future a small sliver right broadcasting is not going anywhere but podcasting is convenient people can listen to it in the car people can view it on youtube on their own leisure mm -hmm. without it being like on the dvr or whatever it's always going to be right. there for people to see which is amazing in my mind yeah uh, one of one of the things we do for people with podcasts is we help uh because of our broadcast experience we help elevate their their look, right? Um, because I have the professional experience and on how to do it. And um, if people, because a lot of people's is just audio only. I'm talking for like video, you know, if they incorporate video, that's one of the things our Viridian Entertainment Services offers clients is how to elevate the quality of their video production. Which is amazing because you're right. I started off uh, over a year ago, right? And it was just audio only. It was this year that I decided, you know what? I need to have video as well too because I want to make sure that my audience is broad. I, I cover globally, right? So I have mm -hmm. four big countries that listen to my podcast. That's awesome. And that I didn't think that was going to happen. When I started, it was – Hey, this is going to be a fun hobby. This is going to be something fun to do. Will I eventually be able to monetize it and be able to create a business out of it? Sure. But everything happened so fast. So it came to a point where you're learning really quickly or else you're failing. Right. So I agree with you. Looks are everything. Marketing is the biggest part of a podcast, getting your reach to expand even more and there's a lot that goes into it such such as your business as well too with broadcasting i think it's great that you opened up a second company under the umbrella of hjz right mm -hmm. and and i think that it's just huge you provide something for people that is an intangible that is important in my opinion yeah, and we're now we're kind of going with the times now that events, corporate events have kind of come back. Uh, Verity Entertainment provides uh, in person, hybrid or fully remote production of these events, and we provide the in house experience and the virtual live stream experience simultaneously. Uh, 
Um, so that's what we do now is like corporate type meetings, corporate events, uh, and we stream them globally uh, for for our clients with the with the professional broadcast quality look to it. And that's what we, you know, pride ourselves on that this is not going to, you know, look like it's airing on Zoom. This could air on TV. That's the quality of it. And folks, for those of you that just missed it, how he just dropped the big knowledge bomb of the hour here, which is he evolved with the times. And we see it. I know you see it too, Howie. In business, the people that don't evolve and they're stuck and they don't like change, they tend to fail. And right. it's sad to say, and there were a lot of businesses we lost when the pandemic hit because they were unwilling to change. And so key knowledge bomb that you just dropped is evolution, evolution, evolution. And what I mean totally. by that is you evolve with the times, you figure out how to structure your business model in a way where you're still surviving and you're doing better than ever right now. Yeah. I learned, you know, a business coach taught me that a few years ago. That was like the best, some of the best money I ever spent. Uh, I hired a business coach and it, it basically taught me to think outside the box, you know, um, not to be so involved in the business, um, but always thinking three, six three to six months down the road, right? Because if you're too involved now, three months down the road, you're, you're not going to have anything. So you got to constantly be planning what's next, what project is coming up. Yes, I'm working on this now, but how? what can I be doing for three to six months down the road? So that's always in the back of my mind. Yeah, in the business world, we call that tunnel vision, right? As soon as mm -hmm. you get tunnel vision, because you're so encompassed by your business it's it's hard to get out of that and sometimes you don't see the writing on the wall of how to evolve and so yeah i agree with you that is the best money spent and for uh, my listeners here uh you're welcome because we just <laughs> dropped some free knowledge for you guys to kind of help out with your businesses to help out if you're an entrepreneur right now, what can you do and how should you look forward? For those of you that aren't entrepreneurs yet, how he outlined how he chased his dream and he didn't even know he was within entrepreneurship until one day it clicked, right? Yeah. So I said, if I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I need to know how to spell it at least. <laughs> oh my goodness. That, that word sometimes when I'm typing yeah. it, I'm like, Wait, is it E before you, you before yeah. E? <laughs> so, no, it's it's great. There's there's some great stuff here. I think it's important if we look at it taking the industries out and just using the word entrepreneurship. There are so many avenues and so many things that go into it. And for right. you, it's more than just being behind the camera. It's more than just producing something. You are doing everything right you're doing the planning part you're involved in the monies that are included in it how about the people and the training i mean there's so much that goes into it yeah um right now we, we're hjz productions is involved in uh, uh a big uh contract soccer contract and we're finding that we need to, our biggest problem is we're running out of people to call. Uh, so the next avenue is how do we train new people? So that's the next, you know, do we open up, a, I already have a course that was developed, but how do we take that to the next level to try to get new people into, into our industry? Listen, I'll go to the World Cup with you. Let's do this. Awesome. So, Howie, you've already dropped a million knowledge bombs this episode, which I think is awesome. But if you were to just scale it back to one very important key concept, what would you like to leave with the listeners? Like, what's the most important thing in your mind? Yeah, the most important thing in my mind is, you know, as an entrepreneur, I treat 
I, I treat my clients how I would want to be treated. Um, I, I, I make sure that I, I respond quickly, but not too quick. And what I mean by that is I re, re I don't send any email out before rereading it five times to make sure there's no spelling mistakes and make sure there's no grammatic mistakes. And if I have a question, I, I'm not afraid to ask for help because I want to represent our business in the best possible way and not embarrass us. So it's just like putting our best foot forward a hundred percent of the time, all the time. So in that short response, I wrote down three things that were important. One, tactical responses, right? Being tactical and surgical with how you respond and making sure that your image is 100% what you want it to be portrayed as. And then yep. strategy, of course, being able to strategize how communication is, what you're trying to communicate, what you're, what message you're trying to send out. So those are all amazing things and just so everybody knows this isn't going to be the last time that you guys hear howie this is like to whet your appetite him and i in pre-production we talked about something fun that i think him and i putting together it, it's perfect so more to come in the very very near future with howie awesome looking forward to it is there anything else you want to leave with our uh, listeners for this episode? Anything you want them to kind of look at, uh, research maybe, or kind of see on your end? Yeah, if anyone, you know, needs help with uh, events, event planning, feel for, or, you know, podcast, uh, they want to help elevate their production needs, you know, feel free to contact me, uh, howiezales.com. Uh, or I'm on LinkedIn at Howard Zales, and uh, hopefully we'll hear from someone soon. Is LinkedIn the best? Out. Is LinkedIn the best median for people to get a hold of you, social media wise, or do you have a lot of social media? Yeah, we we have a lot. Uh, each company has its own <laughs> its own Instagram page, its own Twitter page, its own LinkedIn page. But at Howard Zales is probably the easiest on LinkedIn, or at Howie Zales, my website. You sound like me. I have like six or seven different social aspects, the website. Uh, I can't even everything. keep up with it. Me neither. And and every day I'm spending like two or three hours making sure, making sure the social media avenue is like perfect. Yeah. Well, Howie, I, I appreciate you coming on. I know. Oh, it's it, my pleasure. I know it seems like we, we brushed through a lot, but there was a lot of knowledge that was given in this and on a topic that I'm passionate about and obviously you're in it, we could talk for days on this, but <laughs> like I said, I already dropped the secret. We're going to, we're going to have you back for sure. Awesome. Dustin, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Howie. You have a wonderful day. And this is another episode of chopping with fire.